welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be going over five exercises that target your glutes that are amazing for your glutes. My personal favorite, my top glute builders in my opinion. And yeah, I'm really excited because although these might be exercises that you've probably seen if you've scoured the internet and tried to find ways that you can grow your glutes or if you've been on my channel before, you've definitely seen these exercises. But I am going to be breaking down each exercise um, while I show you guys the demonstration. Key things that you definitely need to focus on for optimal results. So if you guys are excited for this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and follow me over on my Instagram if you don't already. And if you're new to this channel, hey, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. Alrighty guys, so our first exercise should be, no surprise, it is the holy grail, it is everything and more, and that is our hip thrust, of course. Alrighty, so for the hip thrust, I have three main tips that if you're not doing, you definitely need to add in right now, and it'll change your hip thrust forever, you will thank me later. Number one is adding in a resistance band. I love adding in a resistance band right above my knee. What that does is it keeps my side glutes activated and working as I'm doing my hip thrust as well, so that's amazing for just an overall glute just burn out. I promise you guys, if you add in a resistance band, you are gonna exhaust your glutes so much faster and it's going to hurt so much worse. The key thing with the resistance bands is you need to be pushing out against the resistance band as you're doing your reps. Do not let your knees come in. That is not good, not good form, and it's not really gonna be doing anything. It's probably gonna just be really uncomfortable. Number two is before you add in any weight, please play around with your foot placement because I can't really get on here and say, you know, um, this is the foot placement you need to have. You need to be at this angle because everybody's body is different. Our legs are going to be longer. Some are going to be shorter. Some torso is going to be longer. So figure out if you need to put your feet a little forward or if you need to bring them in a little bit more to feel it more in your glutes. A lot of the times hamstrings can take over in hip thrust depending on your foot placement. So play around with your foot placement before you add in weight. That'll be, that'll change the game. If you just add in weight before you've played around with your placement, you say, oh, okay, this, this footing seems about right. You're going to be so focused on just getting through the exercise and getting up that heavy weight that you're not even really using your glutes as much as you can. And my third tip for hip thrust is how we perform it, right? I used to literally take my whole entire body and just thrust with it using my upper body, everything like that, and just totally just use my whole entire body. What you want to do with hip thrust is you just want to be using the lower half. So from your like rib cage up, you do not want to be moving. You want that to be in the same exact spot for the entire duration of you doing this exercise. And I literally just am thinking about like an ice cream scooper. And I think Brett Contreras, the glute guy, that's where I got this technique. So what that does is that takes away um, of any momentum that you may be having from like using like a swinging motion and using your upper body. And trust me, you guys, this you will feel the difference. So like I said, make sure you're keeping the upper half of your body completely still and chin tucked, head forward, and just think about being like an ice cream scoop. Um, and don't overextend, don't try to like come up too high, you'll hurt your back. Um, but just to, you know, to a neutral spot and then keep it slow and controlled. So those are my three tips for hip thrust that if you have not been including that with your hip thrust, make sure that you do because it will change your hip thrust, okay? So now moving on to our second exercise that is going to be sumo deadlifts. Um, with this, you really just need to focus on keeping your back extremely straight and reaching for that stretch. So you don't wanna be doing a squat, so you're not gonna be bending your knees too much. You are gonna be leaning forward, but making sure that you're kind of keeping your chest up and it's, you're not letting your chest fall. And really, as soon as you feel that good stretch in your hamstrings think about using your legs to pull up and do not just pull up with your upper body activate your glutes and let your legs pull you up so what i'd like to think when i get down there is push through your heels so right when i get down there to that stretch that i know is the furthest i can go and my back is still straight and i'm not compromising my form i will spring up thinking about pushing through my heels so that's pretty much my tips for the deadlifts they are I feel like the more you do them, the more comfortable you'll get with them and the more you'll figure out what feels most comfortable to you. So I absolutely love this exercise for glutes. It just, you feel it so much. And I just overall love this exercise because you're engaging your core as well. And it just, it's just one of those exercises that feel really, really good. Like it's just a comfortable exercise. I don't know how to explain it other than I just love it. So our third exercise is a dumbbell squat. So a key tip for this is make sure that the dumbbell is horizontal and it's not vertical. What I love about doing this exercise with a dumbbell opposed to a barbell, like I've been saying, I love for, every, for those other exercises. I love doing this with the dumbbell because the weight is at the bottom 
and for some reason it just helps me get into a deeper squat more comfortably i feel like when i have the barbell and i'm doing a squat a lot of the times my knees will start to cave in a little bit because the weight is up here um it's harder for me to like really keep my form as much so personally that's why i really love a dumbbell squat and um i like obviously doing it in the sumo stance which is just wider and really letting that weight kind of let me sink down into my squat and then using my heels to push up and bring that weight up. So the next exercise are split squats. And this guys, I know a lot of people are scared to do because you gotta balance yourself, but you guys, this exercise for your glutes is amazing because single leg movements are so much more challenging and it takes less weight to, have to build muscle or to challenge your muscle because obviously you're using one leg and the rest you're just like using to balance. So some key tips with the split squats is you wanna find your placement again before you pick up the weight. So do not pick up the weight and then try to hobble around and go and squat because because chances are you're going to be tired, um, you know, holding the weight, trying to find what's comfortable for you. So before you pick up the weight, do a couple body weight squats, finding your feet placement. Um, it's okay if your knee comes a little bit over your toe, but it just doesn't want to be excessively like forward. You don't want to be leaning forward. You still want to keep your chest up, um, but you can lean a little bit forward. You don't need to be straight up with your back like straight up. That's just uncomfortable and your body naturally cannot really get like a good squat that way um so what i like to do is like i said before i add in any weight i will find my placement and find what's comfortable so i feel the furthest that my foot is away from the bench the more i will feel it in my glutes and hamstrings and then the closer that my foot is to the bench i'm going to feel it more in my quads so that's kind of how i make that differentiation and so of course we're trying to target the glutes right now so you want to bring your foot out further but you don't want it to be too far you don't want to be too far to where it's uncomfortable or you feel like you're overstretching or overarching you still want it to be a comfortable place to where you still have control and balance um, and you're able to focus and it's especially important to push through your heel okay I cannot stress that enough you don't want to be on your toes um, because then your weight is going to be shifting more to the front you're gonna be putting a lot of weight on your knee um, also another key tip is do not lock out your knees all the way I used to do this a lot with like almost every exercise I did and locking out your knees is just a no-go we got to save our knees and our joints because we only get one of those and you don't want to damage those because it's really hard to repair sometimes they never repair or you'll just feel it later on in life so we want to save those so yeah you want to come up like 95 percent do not lock out your knee and then dip back down i like to try to get as deep and low in my um lunge as i can get and then like i said push up through your feet so for our last workout it's going to be glute kickbacks now there are so many different variations you can do with glute kickbacks you can do standing lying on all fours i know that's a probably like the most known one or more popular one and they're called donkey kicks but essentially what it is is just you know either you're lying you're standing or you're leaning on something and you're kicking your leg back this is so so important to make sure that you are keeping your back straight whether it is more comfortable for you to be a little bit bent over or standing straight up that's a total preference you just don't want to be arching your back you don't want to be like arching it too much back or you don't want to be bending it forward you want to make sure that you're keeping your back straight this variation that i was that i'm showing you guys today um it's different and unique but i came across it and i really loved it because you know it the weight is in the crease of your leg you really have to squeeze your calf and your hamstrings together really tight to make sure that the weight doesn't slip and when doing this i feel like i'm able to isolate my glutes even more i guess maybe because i'm squeezing my hamstrings and my calf leg together for some reason i don't know it just it just really gets my glutes pumped up and you can feel it really really well like i said for this one the only real key thing you can do this with resistance band you can do it with whatever you feel comfortable um making sure that you're not using your lower back too much and you're not overarching or you're just you're using your glutes and you're focusing on that i personally find it to be the most comfortable when i'm standing up but just leaning a little bit forward i feel like that's where i'm able to get the best range of motion and it feels really comfortable for me if you try this one that i do this variation make sure that you're just squeezing your calf and your thigh together as hard as you can because that weight will shift or slip if you're not um, but give it a go if you never tried that so yeah guys that's going to wrap it up for my favorite my top glute builders that i feel like if you're not doing with these key things that i've pointed out for you give it a try because i really feel like it will change your glutes if you haven't been including these and yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all I have to say. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!